This video is part of a series about diabetes and the eye. In this video, we are going to present the histories of the people whose photos we used as illustrations of retinopathy. Hello, my name is Craig Blackwell. I'm an ophthalmologist in Santa Cruz, California. In our previous videos about diabetes, we have shown that damage to small and large blood vessels causes complications that can occur in just about every system of your body. The eye happens to be a special place where we can see the small vessel effects in the retina as they happen. The main point of the presentation on control and complications was the correlation between blood sugar control and retinal damage. Just looking at the results on a graph may have been a bit abstract, so to make the connection more real, I'm going to show you case histories of the patients that were used for the illustrations. These are patients I have been seeing for years, so the stories are compacted, but I think they get the point across. For those who haven't seen the other videos, let us start by briefly reviewing the eye. The cornea, iris, and lens are the focusing parts of the eye. They take incoming light and focus a sharp image on the retina. The retina is a layer of nerve tissue that lines the inside of the eye. It functions like film in a camera, sensing light and turning that into nerve impulses that travel along the optic nerve to the brain. The retina is the main part we are concerned about in discussing diabetic damage to the eye. This is the view looking through the pupil into the inside of the eye. The yellow disc is the optic nerve. From the nerve, you can see arteries and veins branching out to supply blood to the inner half of the retina. The rest of what you see is the retina, which lines almost the entire inside of the eye. The center part of the retina, which serves your detail vision, is called the macula. The finest detail vision is in the fovea. That is the part that allows you to read and recognize faces. Keep this image in mind. It's a very nice looking normal retina because in a minute we will be seeing damaged retinas. This is an OCT scan which uses reflected light to show fine details of retinal structure. The hill and valley is the normal contour of the fovea, the very center part of the retina you saw in the previous photo. Note also the even, orderly layered structure. This is a retinal angiogram where you can see retinal circulation live. Fluorescein dye is injected into a vein, usually in the hand, and a special camera photographs it as it travels through the blood vessels in the retina. The bright white lines are the arteries and veins on the surface of the retina that supply the inner retinal layers. The mottled background is the choroidal circulation, which is behind the retina and supplies the outer layers. The darker area in the center is extra pigment in the fovea, blocking background light from the choroid. In diabetes, damage to the retina occurs in stages. The first stage to be visible comes from damage to the capillaries, making the vessel walls weak and leaky. The arrow is pointing at a bulge in the vessel wall called a microaneurysm. The yellow halo around it is leakage of the serum part of blood into the retina, which is called edema, and reduces function. Leakage of red cells is hemorrhage. In the second stage of damage, the capillary vessels shut down. When retinal cells are starved for oxygen, they produce a substance called VEGF that causes growth of new blood vessels. This is the ominous proliferative stage. New blood vessels sound like a good idea, but they are fragile and produce large hemorrhages into the eye with bad complications. In the video about diabetic retinopathy, we covered the progression of retinopathy and what treatment was appropriate for each stage. The most important and effective treatment is, as you would expect, prevention, with good control of blood sugar and other risk factors. Once retinopathy has begun to develop, there are several treatment options. In general, leakage can be treated by localized laser aimed at sealing leaking vessels, or by medication injected into the eye. Once new vessel growth has started, it requires either widespread laser or medication injected into the eye. For details of treatment, you can go to that video. Next, we are going to see several of the treatment options as they apply to the individual cases. This is Mr. S., a very agreeable gentleman who first came to see us in 2008 at age 53. 
he was diagnosed with diabetes at age 30. He admitted that he didn't always pay attention to keeping blood sugar under control, with A1C values up to 11 in the past few years, but he was working on improving his control. His medications included insulin, medication to lower blood pressure, and medication to control lipids. Here is a photo of his right retina. What do you see? The dark and light spots are scars of previous laser treatment. There is not much retina left untouched. This much laser treatment means he had retinopathy in the past, which had advanced to the proliferative stage. There is a similar amount of treatment in the left eye. The fact that his vision was still reasonably good, 2030 in the right eye and 2040 in the left, means he got sufficient treatment before damage was unrepairable. As a reference, 2040 is a threshold for a driver's license. We talked about the importance of keeping blood sugar, blood pressure, and risk factors under control to prevent further complications. Through 2009 and 2010, his A1C scores were running around 8, with elevated blood pressure at 145 over 95. One day, Mr. S. called in, noting vision in the right eye seemed a little fuzzy. Here is what was happening inside that eye. The dark red crescent is blood in front of the retina behind the vitreous. There is also a small hemorrhage on the top of the optic nerve. He had an angiogram showing new vessel growth, so more laser treatment was added. The new vessels regressed and the hemorrhage gradually cleared. At his 2011 visit, Mr. S. reported his last A1C was 10. Now he was noticing vision in the left eye seemed blurred. Vision measured 2030 in the right and 2040 on the left. The OCT scan of the right eye shows the normal hill and valley contour and even retinal layers with no edema. Here is the OCT scan of the left eye showing the normal contour is gone and the black spaces represent fluid within the retinal layers. That is macular edema, which is affecting his vision. The retinal con consultant is currently treating this with a series of injections of avastin into the eye. It remains to be seen how vision will end up. The lesson of Mr. S is that although there are a number of tools available to treat diabetic retinopathy, the problems will continue to recur if the blood sugar and blood pressure are not adequately controlled. As retinal damage advances, vision may not be recoverable. Case number two. This is Ms. T. She's a very nice professional woman who first came to us in 2005, having been under treatment for diabetes for over 10 years. At age 55, she was overweight, wasn't paying attention to her A1C numbers, and her recent blood pressure was 190 over 100. This photo is the right eye with a vision of 2025. This one is the left with vision of 2040. What do you see going on in this photo? The arrow points to one of multiple patches of blood in the retina. The small white spots indicate areas of edema. This represents retinopathy at a level requiring laser treatment. An angiogram was done to precisely locate the leaking areas and the laser was used to seal those leaks. Here is her left eye before and after treatment. The light and dark spots are scars where the laser was applied. Note how nicely all the blood and edema has cleared. This worsening of retinopathy and accompanying blurred vision had Ms. T concerned that she was in danger of losing her vision. With that as motivation, she lost 35 pounds and got her A1C score down to 5.4. These photos from 2010 show two things. First, the laser treatment succeeded in sealing the leaks. The exudates and hemorrhages are all cleared. Vision in each eye improved to nearly 2020. Second, by keeping her A1C scores under 6 and blood pressure under control, her retinopathy has stayed stable through her last visit in 2011. Her efforts are rewarded. Case number three. Mr. A was 51 years old when he first came in 2006. He had been under treatment for diabetes for 12 years. He was faithful with his medications, noting that his toughest challenge was keeping his diet in check. 
The highest A1C level he could recall was 7.4. Here are photos of his retinas at his initial exam. There was no visible retinopathy. He comes in consistently for his yearly retina checks. In 2008, the first sign of retinopathy appeared. You have to look closely to find the small ring of exudates. Here is an arrow to help. And here is a magnified view. Compared to the last two cases, this looks relatively minor, which it is, except for the fact that the edema has encroached on the fovea, so it needs to be treated. Here is the full angiogram showing several microaneurysms, the bright spots, in both eyes. In this late frame of the right eye, you can see the one leaking into the fovea, creating the macular edema. That required one small, gentle application of laser treatment to seal. Mr. A has been diligent in maintaining his A1C scores at 7.4 or less, as well as controlling blood pressure and other risk factors. As of 2011, vision remains good and retinopathy has not advanced. Case number four. Mrs. R was a 37-year-old clerical worker when she first came to us in 1995. She had been started on insulin two years before. She did not know an A1C level, but fasting blood sugars varied widely from 115 to 200. Vision was 20-20, and there was no retinopathy. In 2001, the first patch of retinal edema appeared in the left eye, but it was small and did not yet require treatment. Returning in 2004, her right retina looked like this. Look at how clearly the early retinopathy shows itself. Each white ring outlines a patch of edema surrounding a microaneurysm. And here is the left eye. Mrs. R had an angiogram to identify the location of the leaking spots, then underwent laser treatment aimed at sealing the leaking areas. The dark spots are the scars from the laser applications. Note that the white rings of retinal edema have cleared. At her last visit in 2010, there were no new areas of leakage. Despite closer monitoring by her physicians, her last A1C was 9.2. So far, Mrs. R has been lucky the retinopathy has been treatable, but odds are she will encounter significant trouble if control is not improved. These patients are good examples, showing that better control of blood sugar and other risk factors significantly affects the rate of complications. If you have diabetes, you must realize that your fate is mostly in your own hands. But there are many resources available to you, so don't be afraid to ask for help. There are more details included in the videos on diabetic retinopathy and diabetes control and complications.